Hello guys, welcome to lesson number 45 in our series, Drawing Techniques for Beginners. I think this is probably going to be our final session for our homestead portrait or landscape, I guess it's not a portrait, is it? Um, and as you can see, I continued adding the cloudy background from the last lesson. Now what I did decide to do is, I decided to lighten this dark cloud here. I know that we did uh, go into that with, with quite a lot of dark contrast in there, but I just felt that as I was drawing the clouds, it was taking some of the contrast away from the actual homestead itself. I, I just felt like I wanted the actual building itself to be the main focal point. So I did lighten that down. And I, like I said, I've continued around the edge of the drawing with, with our clouds using the technique that we went through last lesson. So what we're gonna be finishing off with today is I'm gonna be adding a few final details. We're gonna be taking out some of the final highlights uh, and using our secret weapon that we always uh, come to at the end, which is my uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos black pencil crayon or colored pencil. So we're going to be adding some of that into these darker areas here. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's crack on with that. I'm gonna be using the kneaded eraser as well. So uh, just freshen your kneaded eraser up. Uh, make one end of it a point and keep the other end rounded. Um, let's come in with the Faber-Castell. So I'm just going to be, look really now, just trying to pull out some of these very, very dark areas, some of these dark recesses in, in some of these doorways. And just really, just trying to capture some contrast in there that's really going to take the viewer's eye and just add that sense of realism. Like I said, this is lesson number 45 now in the series that we've been working on. And uh, I can't believe we've, we've actually got to sort of almost half a century, nearly 50 videos. Uh, I had no idea that we'd be still drawing this far into it when I came up with the idea for this Tutorial Tuesday group and uh, videos over on the YouTube channel. So thank you so much for supporting me this far. But if this is the first time you've popped into one of my lessons, go and check out lessons one to six. I really would recommend going and checking out lessons one to six because a lot of the techniques and a lot of the pencil skills that we're using for these landscapes and portraits and things like that are uh, covered in depth in some of those videos. So definitely lessons one to six. Um, if you want to jump in and, and have a go at the the homestead then go and find the start of that I think we're about six or seven lessons in now so what I'm doing is I'm just looking for these darkest little areas now just to bring out a little bit more shade and contrast in some of those areas uh, I'm not pressing on too hard I'm still using my tapered stroke which is a pulling action towards me but I'm just going around my drawing now just being very careful not to go too dark in some of the areas that aren't too dark on the reference. But I am just adding that layer. And because we haven't damaged the tooth of the paper with the pencils before we've reached this stage, I can still get a lovely layer of this Polychromos colored pencil. And I really do enjoy this stage of the drawing. It really does start to bring things to life. I've really enjoyed adding some of those clouds in the top corner. I hope you enjoyed the lesson on adding the clouds. It's um, it's definitely a, a technique that I've used an awful lot in lots of my drawings that I've done. I've done a few commissions of aeroplanes and I always like to add, even if it's just a, a very subtle background of clouds, I do like to add that. Uh, to my aeroplane drawings it, it does just bring another dimension and like we've said before when we're trying to draw realism we want contrast and I don't just mean contrast in the the lights and the darks but contrast between materials that we're drawing and textures so I find that you know with a stark background or a very harsh background if you've got some subtlety in the foreground or vice versa, or if we've got some very stark or metallic objects, machined objects like the aeroplanes or a car or something like that, then it's nice to have that very soft and subtle background of the clouds. But obviously in this, in this drawing here, we have got 
some of these wild grasses in front as well. So we've got this lovely um, ability to sort of frame our drawing with the clouds at the top and then these wild grasses at the bottom. And then we've got the fantastic textures and contrast of textures with the old dilapidated building, which has been the main reason why I picked this drawing for one of our projects, because it's uh, it's given us the opportunity to really try some new things. And I've been super impressed with some of the work that you've done over on the Facebook group. If this is the first time you've come to the videos or um, you haven't, found our group yet go and check out the facebook group called tutorial tuesdays beginners to pro uh, request to join and i will uh, accept that we've got a fantastic group on there and what people are doing is they're sharing their work they're sharing their progress in the lessons and i've seen some of these homesteads that you've drawn and some of them are wonderful and there's a few of you that are really really taking the group to another level and adding some of your own advice and tips uh, to, to people which is fantastic and it's exactly what I wanted from the group you'll know that the uh, other Facebook groups a lot of the art groups that I'm sure a lot of members over on tutorial Tuesdays are also members of the there's an awful lot of drama on there recently I've seen a lot of political stuff and people posting spam and whatnot and I keep saying this on every video that I make I'm so glad that our group isn't one of those and we're not well I'm certainly not having to delete content very often we've had a few spam um, and people report quite well so thank you so much for making the group supportive and a place that's nice to hang out and discuss art and I've got no problem with people posting pictures of their own artwork on there it's it's motivating it's fantastic so you know keep up the good work keep the content coming uh, but more importantly, keep enjoying these tutorials and these lessons. Uh, I've had some wonderful messages from people uh, and it's lovely following some of you on Instagram and then on my news feed seeing one of the projects pop up on the Instagram feed and some of the lovely comments that some of you are getting from your own social media following. Um, so, you know, it makes me very, very proud to see that. Okay, so I'm going to just start to now take out some of these highlights I'm using my mono zero eraser and I'm just going to reinforce some of these highlights now you know I talk an awful lot about contrast and contrast in these areas is is super important so this roof here these panels on this roof are some of our strongest highlights and over the duration of this drawing a lot of these highlighted areas become slightly muddied and slightly um, darker than we would want them because the the graphite moves around so as a a way of finishing up I always like to just go over my highlighted areas and make sure that I am light enough in areas that are supposed to be light and just taking out some of the reflections, although wood doesn't always have a reflection necessarily. They have highlighted areas on them. So I'm just making sure that I'm creating as many of those as I can because it's those subtle changes in value that really draw the viewer's eye to something in our drawing that makes it pop and again just adding some of these final strands of grass these wild grasses just getting a slight overlap onto some of this wooden area these steps don't forget to check out the instagram as well guys it's at artistic n1k it's the same as the youtube channel um, just drop me a message and say that you've come through the YouTube channel or you're on the Facebook group and I'll follow you back. It's, a, it's nice to, to share the love and 
get everybody's art out there. See if we can get around these algorithms that these social media platforms use and get our work out there to the masses. This has been a, a you know a real it's been a real challenge and I like to pick things that are going to challenge me. You know, I'm learning from each one of these drawings just as much as some of you guys and and girls are. So I think we're going to go with the next project. I think we're going to go with the Statue of Liberty picture that I posted. So I will repost that uh, over on the Facebook group. It will be on the reference images. If you go to the top of the Facebook page and have a look on the top, there's a, there's a few tabs and one of them says albums and then there's reference images in there. So you'll be able to find the Statue of Liberty. Print that off. And uh, I'll be dropping that video where we're going to start planning that out using one of the methods that we've been practicing for a while, uh, the grid method. And yeah, I'm excited about that. We're going to have some very smooth, some very smooth transitions. We're going to try and keep it very smooth. I think the, I think the image is again is fantastic. I use Pixabay an awful lot, which is a free app. Uh, there's many out there, but some of the some of the pictures on there are superb, and I really enjoy the fact that they're in such high resolution. Um, I say to people quite a lot that if you're trying to draw something realistic, you need a a reference image that does it justice. Otherwise, you're you're going to be making things up, and I don't like to make things up. I want to see everything. Like I've said before, sometimes I have an iPad or a computer screen with the reference image we're working from in front of me as well, so that I can zoom in and I can get a slightly higher resolution in certain areas. So make sure that you are comfortable with the image that you're drawing. If someone's asking you for a commission, don't just take the first blurry image that they give you and and try and work your magic on that. You know, you have to sometimes say, unfortunately, I, I can't work with this reference image. Have you got anything that's better? Uh, worst case scenario, you're going to go and have to take some images yourself, which is sometimes a bit of fun. Sometimes not. But try and do the best job that you can. And that often means saying no to certain reference images. So we've just got a, a couple of sort of sunbeams coming through. One of these gaps in the roof. As we're looking at this, we've definitely got a few specks of light within this darkness that again would be very easy to leave out and uh, you would probably never notice it but what I like to do with each drawing that I take on I try and make it slightly better than the last one so if I can add an extra detail or an extra layer of texture somewhere, I'm always aiming for that. And if we have that attitude and that way of thinking, by the time you've done 100 drawings, it's going to be 100% better than your first drawing if we make a 1% increase each time we draw. Just adding some final details, and, and I, I say this every time whenever we, whenever we take these classes together and I post these videos, I say it on every video, I think, that there has to be a point at which you say enough's enough. I could probably still fiddle around with this for another two hours, three hours. Uh, 
a good friend of mine that I met through an art group a few years ago said to me once, art is never finished, it's just simply abandoned. And that's really stuck with me and it absolutely rings true. I have to reach a point with this drawing where I say, do you know what, I'm finished with it now. I could keep playing with these textures and developing these brighter areas. But there does have to be reach a point where I say I'm finished. And that's the beauty of it. You can keep coming back and back and back. And Although sometimes the perfectionist in us all wants to do that, there's a certain beauty about looking at something and going, I could just add this or I could just add that, but I'm going to leave it alone. I'm going to let it, let the imagination of somebody else complete some of those areas. And sometimes they're the best drawings or paintings. See, our mind is a wonderful tool. It really does want to interpret things. It wants to see things that aren't there. It wants to create illusions in our mind. And all we need to do is sometimes give our brain a gentle push in a direction. Give it a slight hint that this is a, a shadow, this is a shaded area. And your brain will reconstruct everything accordingly. What we're doing now is, I call this balancing values. I'm looking for the darkest areas on my image, looking for the lightest areas, and I'm making sure that those two contrasting areas are definitely within the picture, and then everything else is within those two values, I guess. So these are my darkest areas, these have to be my darkest areas here, my lightest areas here, here, this area here. And once I feel I've got that, I just need to play around with some of the values in and around them to create the illusion of texture and depth, contour. So even though I've cleaned this, this area up a couple of times, I'm still getting graphite onto these shiplap boards here. So I do need to make sure that these being the, the face of the building that is catching the sun first, they absolutely need to be my lightest region along with some of these, and the kneaded arrays is fantastic for just dragging lightly across and just removing a, a layer at a time of graphite rather than the harsh point of the mono zero eraser which just takes out all the way down to the tooth of the paper. I can play around with some of these clouds as well and just use the pointed area in my or of my kneaded eraser and just bring out some slightly lighter zones in some of those clouds. But like I say, I didn't want to go too dark. I initially thought we were going to go for some very dark dramatic clouds, but it just for me it just started to take away from the overall composition of the drawing and I wanted this homestead to stand out. So I think I'm going to leave it there. We just need to do the most important part and I'm going to take my 2B pencil. I'm going to sign this and um, let's look for an appropriate area. I'm thinking, hmm, let's see, I can feel you're screaming at me going, 
over there, to the left, to the right. I, I, I tend to always sign over to the, to the right hand side, but let's go to the left now. Perfect. And I like to use the 2B pencil because I can get darkness in there by pressing slightly harder, um, but I'm not damaging the tooth of the paper. So, I think that draws us to a conclusion actually with our homestead. It's been wonderful drawing this. Thank you for drawing along with me. Don't forget to post your progress shots up on the, on the group. Uh, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for all of the comments, the likes, the subscriptions. Uh, the channel's really starting to take off, so thank you for that. Uh, I'm enjoying this. I'm looking forward to the next project a lot. I think we're going to uh, learn again some more valuable lessons. Um, don't forget to say hello over on the group and uh, ask as many questions as you like. I do try and answer everybody's questions. But thanks so much for, for drawing along with me. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a blast. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hit subscribe, smack the notification button, follow me on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter.